solely focusing on career and answering some questions that people have had for me about what I do. So basically, I'm a social worker by profession. Social worker is someone who assesses what's going on, someone who tries to meet the need and serve their client. Um, and that could be with a range of things. It could be with housing. It could be with um, employment. It could be with the school system. It could, and, and a lot of times the, the systems intertwine. It could be in criminal justice. My role is to get in there and advocate for my youth and also educate my youth on the decision making and, and the pros and cons of all of those things and just help the person get on, on, a, on a steady path. And um, the reason why I chose social work was because I had so much help and so much support in my community from church to family, my family and friends, I wanted to do the same for others. I knew that there were other people out here that were maybe dealing with something secretly that they just wanted to wanted to get help on. And so that's where I am. And like any career, social work has levels to, you know, you want to level all the way up. You don't just want to just stay at the baseline of where you are. And so coming out of college, you know, you do your internship, you do your field placement, you work here. Um, a lot of times social workers have case management positions, so it may not always say social worker, but when I got out of Howard, I got a case manager um, position with DC government, um, working in the youth division, and you know, my goal was to get my license. So there's, there's a level of licensure that you um, can get. Obviously, the higher the licensure, the more money, the more opportunity to grow. So I just want to answer a few questions that I have gotten on LinkedIn from people who are either looking to enter social work as a career or profession and are looking to go back to school or for people who are already graduated from their master's in social work and are looking to get their licensure. So these are a couple of questions that um, some people reached out to me on LinkedIn to, to ask. And the first one is, what were you looking for in a program and how did you decide on Howard? Um, what was I looking for in a program? <laughs> to be honest, I was looking for something because it was such a kind of a quick, abrupt change. I was working at Job Corps and then I was like, oh my gosh, I want to be a counselor. Like I have to go back to school. I don't know how. So it was a quick change. Um, so I was looking for a program that would meet that timeline for me, which means i I didn't want a program that had a GRE, and that's just to be honest. I hate tests, and um, taking the GRE was not on my list. I decided so. on Howard, one, because of location and um, finances. So I actually ended up getting a partial scholarship to Howard for my books, and that covered that like each semester, so I was so grateful for that. So I, it, for me, it was location and money, and that's just being honest. Um, what do you like or dislike about Howard's program? What I liked about Howard's program, keeping it real, I really liked um, the intimacy. It was it was a it was this family sized cohort of people. Um, the professors are so knowledgeable. Some of them still work. Some of them are retired and just have a love for social work and just want to prepare the next generation of social workers. And so I loved the professors. They really are passionate about their area or specialty of focus. Um, and, and just so many resources in the city and all over, not just DC, but our professors are well connected and Howard's network is amazing. So if you are Howard, if you're a bison, you know, utilize your network, even if you're not utilize your network. Um, something that I dislike about Howard's program, I would say, um, it was a little outdated as far as the process to getting into the school. So when I applied, it was not online yet. It was still like a paper application. They, the School of Social Work wasn't on board with the rest of the school where, you know, you could apply online. And so I, that was a pet peeve. It was like, oh, that's kind of inconvenient. I had to mail my application in and do a money order. But they have changed that. And that is something that I know is, um, is no longer a problem. So I would say, that and I also would be honest that if you're looking to do macro level social work, which is like the the bigger umbrella, the overarching administrative or policy track, um, I heard and this isn't my experience, but I heard from some of my colleagues that there weren't they didn't feel it was equal amount of opportunities as far as 
job or field placements. Um, I was a micro level social worker coming in. So that means I was direct practice. I was, I like to work one on one with, with my clients and people in so like a ground level social worker. And so that's what I heard. I can't speak to it because I was the one that was, um, the direct practice track. And so that's something that you may want to add someone if you are interested in the macro level social work to see if it's a good fit for you and talk to a student that did that way. Um, how important do you think school choice is when finding a job? Um, I think it's important that you, you may, like I wanted to live in California. So I was like, well, I'm going to go to school in California, <laughs> but financially it just didn't work out. So I would just really, um, really think about where you want to, plant your roots and, and if you have family in the area because school is expensive and you know I, I worked part-time when I was in school some people did full-time work and full-time parenting and school full-time so I commend the people that were able to balance that but I think it really is up to you and, and your interest and in maybe the city or the program and just doing your research in that way um because the job you know DC is is full of you know, I mean, like I said, with social work, you can go anywhere. But D.C. has a great, I mean, it's a great area to do social work. What was your concentration? How important is your concentration? I asked because I want to be flexible in the field. I want to start with direct and micro, but eventually get into macro and policy, which tends to be two different concentrations at schools. That's a really good one. So my concentration to answer the first question was family and child welfare so i knew that families and children were an area that i was i wanted to be a part of strengthening um and i think it's important but you can do a lot with child welfare i mean some the other concentrations were like gerontology which is working with the elderly you can work you can do mental health track um i think it's good to really know yourself and the, the field placements and the internships really do help determine what you can handle or what you can't. I knew that for me after doing, um, working at a mental health internship, I was like, you know, this is a lot for me and this just isn't for me. And so I knew that I saw my health declining. My mind was like all over and I just knew that that wasn't the area. It was a good baseline and training to go into my other areas, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't where I wanted to be, um, full time. Um, and I think it's smart that this young lady wants to start off with direct practice and then go into macro because it's hard trying to do it reversed. Um, and that's just some advice that I got from a colleague at one of my jobs. Um, where were any special things the school offered that stood out to you? Prep for licensure, career services, grad assistantships and fellowships. Yes, Howard definitely had all of that. Um, they offer a licensed prep class in the fall for the fall semester, I think like around December. And then they have it for those who are graduating close to the spring. So I've taken them both because like I said, I didn't pass my license exam the first two times or the third time I did. So I took a class twice. I actually bought another class online. But Howard does provide that. Um, which is great they also have a grad writing lab so if you you do a lot of writing in grad school so um my teacher was honest with me it was like you need to go to the writing lab and this is like my first week in school i'm like i thought i was a good writer i was a journalism major but the writing styles are different from journalism i'm very i'm used to being very like storytelling and concise Con does, does that go hand to hand anyway i was used to a, a storytelling in the journalism mindset and frame but it, it was different. So I had to learn and um, and be honest with myself and be willing to be critiqued on my writing. And they do have a fellowships and a lot of opportunities to get scholarship and money. So I know some of my colleagues definitely got those. They're out there. Um, and could you speak a little on what you currently do? Likes and dislikes about, about it. So like I said, I'm in the midst of transitioning out of my current job as a case manager for DC government and the youth services division into working at a hospital. So totally different setting, but I will say I really, really did enjoy my time at, um, my, at my current job at DHS because 
so it's unlimited resources. I mean, it's the government. So, I mean, when whenever my families or my children or my caseload needed anything, I definitely utilized uh, financially and just the programs that we were all connected to. I mean, unlimited amount of help. And I loved um, the past program and my supervisor and my team was solid. Like our team was solid. Everybody just came from different backgrounds and just came in with all this information and all these resources in the city. DC has so many programs and so much help for people. It is like, it's, it's amazing. Um, and the dislike, I would say burnout, just burnout period. It's, 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 it can be tiring when, I think they call it compassion fatigue, when you are so focused on helping, helping, helping others. And you, after a while, you're just like, you know what? I don't care. I just need a day. You know, my mind, I'm stressed. I'm tired. I'm tired of driving around. Um, and so that was probably the, the con of my job was just feeling like I had to constantly chase people. Um, especially if the parents were not um, open to it or if the child wasn't open to it. Sometimes they just aren't ready. And this is where this is part of the work is kind of seeing where people are in their journey, in their process. Am I, do I see I have a problem? Maybe not. So if I don't see it, then I'm not going to sit down and talk to you. So just acknowledging where people are in um, their process and if they're ready to receive the help and just respecting where, where people are. So um, I hope I answered your question. Anything else you would like to share about your experience or feel is important? Um, I would say just stay encouraged because, um, you know, while you're in grad school at Howard specifically, they really stress the, the importance of getting your license as soon as you can. Um, because not only does it give you more money and more exposure to work everywhere or anywhere, it, it, it gives you opportunities to, to grow. Talk to people in your life and, and um, pray about what area God wants you to go into and also just noticing what your interests are and what the pattern maybe has been since you were working in college or in high school. You, you could have always had this interest, but you just never knew it. So talk to people in your life. Talk to your parents. Talk to your, your friends. Talk to people who um, you admire and respect and listen to that can say, you know what, you have always done, done this or you've always had an interest in this. And it'll just it'll just help you connect your dots. So I hope this is encouraging um, for career-wise, just generally. Um, just we, we can't settle. We can't get too comfortable in where we are. And we have to continuously... Um, seek to learn and to and to be willing to listen to those who have been where we've already been and yeah and just and get a mentor someone who can hold you accountable and keep you up when you when it's not easy so I hope this is encouraging and I just wanted to end with reading my Jesus Calling devotion for today and it says do not search for security in the world you inhabit you tend to make mental checklists of things you need to do in order to gain control of your life. If only you could check everything off your list, you could relax and be at peace. But the more you work to accomplish that goal, the more things crop up on your list. The harder you try, the more frustrated you become. There is a better way to find security in this life, and this is the way. Instead of scrutinizing your checklist, Focus your attention on my presence with you. This continual contact with me will keep you in my peace. Moreover, I will help you sort out what is important and what is not. What needs to be done now and what does not. Fix your eyes not on what is seen, your circumstances, but on what is unseen, my presence, which is the presence of God. And I love Jesus Calling because it... You know, it just, it always hits on. It hits home every time. And then there's verses at the bottom. Isaiah 26, verse 3, and 2 Corinthians 4, 18. And this even speaks to me today because I am definitely a go-getter. I've said this over and over. When I have an idea or I have something that I, that's on my mind, I am going to find out how to do it, where, and what time. And I, I, will, I will make a way. And so sometimes that can be great and sometimes... I have to pull back actually a lot of times and um, it just reminds me that in this career journey especially 
as young people or even no matter where you are in, in your career journey, it just reminds you that God is really in control and that we just have to relax. Um, I think a lot of times I'll start my day with all these things I have to do, uh, especially when you're a social worker, there's a lot of documentation that you have to do. You don't only get to help people and talk to them and guide them, but you have to document everything that you do. And so that can be um, a little a little much, but when I just have to remind myself that to fix my eyes on God and that he will organize my day. And it causes me to surrender every day. I literally have to go into the day and say, you know what, God, this is your day. What's on the plan? I have an agenda. Let's be clear. I have an agenda. But God, I give my agenda to you because you may completely gut it out because you know what's most important right now. And so um, having a relationship with God is the key to your career. I mean, he is the one that opens the right doors he shuts the wrong doors now if you that's if you listen <laughs> but I just want to encourage everybody um in their career journey to like take it easy on yourself because when I kept um I kept putting a lot of pressure on me and allowing you know school and other people to put pressure on me as well about the timeline of when I should have my license and it didn't work out like a lot of other people I know some other people didn't pass their license the first time too but I just want to encourage you guys that it's okay. Um, God's timing is truly perfect. And um, just check your heart. Because for me, um, the reason why I wanted to get my license so quickly was so that I could move out of my parents' house. So that I can get more money. So I can do, you know, it was it was kind of a, the selfish motives that I had. And so I had to really check, you know, my heart. And God just slow walked me through this thing. And I'm just so grateful that he knows what I need. And I'm also new in the profession. So... You can't act like you know everything, I, and I and I didn't, and I and I was very honest. I've always been like, you know what? I'm doing this profession, and I'm going to listen to those and gather resources and continue to build. And I think that sometimes as young people, although we have the passion part and we may have a little bit of knowledge, um, we think that we can just take over the world, and we can, but not by ourselves. And I just I appreciate the people, my mentors, and um, my parents that have just poured into me and um yeah I just want to encourage us stick with it relax and go with God's pace